Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to describe the complex conjugate. In this topic we will define the conjugate of a complex number, and we will be looking at both the rectangular and polar representations of this operation. We will then look at a geometric interpretation, and we will observe a number of properties of complex conjugation. Recall from secondary school that when you rationalize the denominator in an expression such as 1 over 1 plus 2 root 3, what you did is you multiplied by 1. Specifically, you multiplied by 1 minus 2 root 3 over 1 minus 2 root 3. You then multiplied out the denominator, simplified, which then gave you your result. You referred to 1 minus 2 root 3 as the conjugate or perhaps the radical conjugate of the denominator 1 plus 2 root 3. Now recall that j by definition is a square root, specifically the square root of negative 1. So given z is equal to alpha plus beta j, it is therefore reasonable to define a complex conjugate of z as z star is equal to alpha minus beta j. One common use of the complex conjugate is to do exactly what we just did. We're rationalizing the denominator. Specifically, here we have 1 plus j over 2 minus j. Well, let's multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator over that same conjugate. Now, we haven't proved this yet, but it makes sense that we can probably multiply out both the numerator and the denominator so let us do so. And so therefore, we have that that ratio is equal to 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6j. Thus, using the complex conjugate, we converted a ratio of complex numbers into the rectangular representation. Some examples. The complex conjugate of 3 plus 4j is 3 minus 4j. The complex conjugate of negative 2 plus j is equal to negative 2 minus j, and the complex conjugate of 5 minus 7j is 5 plus 7j. Now, the geometric interpretation of complex conjugation is simply a reflection through the real axis. So here we see two complex numbers, z and w, and if you were to reflect those two numbers in the real axis, you would get their complex conjugates, z star and w star. Now, if a complex number is in the polar representation, finding the complex conjugate is equally easy to find. So for example, if z is equal to its magnitude phase theta, then the conjugate of z is the ma that magnitude phase negative theta. To show that this is true, simply recall that z phase theta is just the magnitude of z cosine theta plus the magnitude of z sine theta times j. So let's look at the value of the magnitude of z phase negative theta. Well, that's just the magnitude of z cosine of negative theta plus the magnitude sine negative theta times j. But wait a second. Isn't cosine of negative theta just equal to cosine of theta? Well, sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Let's substitute those in to see that that is therefore equal to the expression seen here. But isn't that just the complex conjugate of z? Yes, it is. And thus we see that yes, indeed, the complex conjugate in polar representation is just negating the angle. There are many useful properties of complex conjugate, and these can be proved with either the rectangular or polar representations. We're going to, out of interest, use both of these alternating. So the first theorem, the conjugate of the conjugate of z is z itself. So that is, if z is a complex number and we found its complex conjugate, then the complex conjugate of the complex conjugate is z itself. So let's assume that z is equal to alpha plus beta j. 
Well, if that's true, then z star star is equal to alpha plus beta j starred, and that result is then starred again. Well, the conjugate of alpha plus beta j is alpha minus beta j. And so what's the conjugate of alpha minus beta j? Well, it's just alpha minus minus beta j. But wait a second. That's just alpha plus beta j, which is equal to z. Theorem. Z z star is equal to the magnitude of z squared, or z times the conjugate of z is the absolute value of z all squared. Proof. Well, let's use the polar representation. z is equal to the magnitude of z phase theta. Therefore, z z star is the product of these two complex numbers in their representation. But the complex conjugate of z phase theta is the magnitude of z phase negative theta. Now the product of two complex numbers in polar representation is just the product of the magnitudes and the sum of the angles. So the product of the magnitudes is the absolute value squared. The sum of the angles is theta minus theta, which is zero. And that is the real number that is the absolute value of z squared. Theorem. z plus w all starred is z star plus w star. That is, the conjugate of a sum is the sum of the conjugates. Proof. If z is equal to alpha plus beta j and w is equal to gamma plus delta j, then w plus z all starred is that sum on the right-hand side starred. Well, we can add those two complex numbers together by adding their real and imaginary components. And now we can take the complex conjugate of that by negating the imaginary component. And thus, we can expand that out again to get alpha minus beta j and gamma minus delta j, but that's just z star plus w star. Theorem. The conjugate of a product is the product of the conjugates. Proof. Well, let's assume that z is equal to the magnitude of z phase theta and w is that magnitude phase phi. So, once again, the conjugate of a product is shown on the right-hand side in polar representation. That polar representation product is just the product of the magnitudes phase the sum of the angles, or theta plus phi. Now, the complex conjugate of that complex number is simply that complex number with the angle negated. Oh, but wait a second, we can just expand that out and, oh, isn't that just the product of z phase negative theta and w phase negative phi? Yes, it is. And the first number there is z star. The second number is w star. Theorem. z is equal to z star if and only if z is real. Proof. Assume z is equal to alpha plus beta j. Now, z equals z star if and only if alpha plus beta j is equal to the conjugate of alpha plus beta j. But that's true if and only if alpha plus beta j is equal to alpha minus beta j. But two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real and imaginary components are equal. So that's true if and only if alpha equals alpha which is true, and beta is equal to negative beta. But beta equals negative beta requires that 2 beta is equal to 0, and therefore beta is equal to 0. But wait a second. If beta is equal to 0, 
then Z must be real. You can also prove that Z equals the negative of Z star if and only if Z is imaginary. You can prove that yourself. Theorem. Z plus Z star is twice the real component of Z. Z minus Z star is twice the imaginary component of Z times J. Proof. If Z is equal to alpha plus beta J, then Z plus Z star is the sum of these two complex numbers. But the conjugate of the second one is just alpha minus beta J. And now summing those two together, well, the imaginary parts cancel each other out, and we are left with 2 times alpha. But alpha is the real part, so therefore z plus z star is indeed equal to twice the real component of z. z minus z star is this difference. Taking the complex conjugate of the second number, we get alpha minus beta j, but subtracting that from the first one gives us alpha plus beta j minus alpha plus beta j. The alphas cancel out, and we're left with 2 beta j, but beta is the imaginary component of z, so the result is that z minus z star is twice the imaginary component times j. Theorem. The real part of z is z plus z star over 2, and the imaginary component of z is z minus z star over 2j. For the proof, you can just take the uh, theorem from the previous page and assume you can divide through by 2j. Theorem. The additive inverse of the complex conjugate is the complex conjugate of the additive inverse. Proof. If z is equal to alpha plus beta j, then negative z star is equal to the additive inverse of L, the conjugate of alpha plus beta j. But the conjugate of alpha plus beta j is alpha minus beta j, and the additive inverse of that number is negative alpha plus beta j. But wait a second. Is that not the conjugate of negative alpha minus beta j? Yes, it is. And isn't negative alpha minus beta j equal to the additive inverse of alpha plus beta j? Yes, it is. Thus, we get our result. Now, the most important takeaways are that complex conjugation is just a reflection of a complex number in the real axis. For most operations, it doesn't matter if you reflect first and then perform the operation or perform the operation and then reflect. The sum of the conjugates is the conjugate of the sum. The product of the conjugates is the conjugate of the product. In this topic, we've introduced the complex conjugate. is a reflection of the complex number in the real axis, and it is used in one case to rationalize or make real the denominator. We saw that the conjugate of the conjugate of z is z itself. For many operations, you can apply conjugation either before or after the operation in question, and the real and imaginary components can be extracted using conjugates. Here are some references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!